topic. Everyone is back with me. So, Sophia, when it fits with their narrative, Republicans love the messenger. When it doesn't, um, you know, they they call the witness a never trumper or you know otherwise denigrate the person. But it's pretty amazing here that they're cherry picking the way they are with Ambassador Volker. You know, one of the things that the senators will have to do if the president is impeached and it moves into the Senate is they have to weigh the evidence. And any person, regular lay person, knows, Aaron, that if you have five people that say something happened and you got one person that's kind of sort of saying it might have happened or there maybe it didn't happen, you got to weigh the credibility of those people. And I think uh, Bill Taylor's testimony was just stunning. And Sondland reversing himself and coming back and changing it. Mm -hmm. I don't think you can throw that out. And I think Jim Jordan has zero credibility and he just needs to go away. And at the end of the day, the Republicans didn't get the message of last night, Aaron. They got shellacked. They got beat down in my home state of Virginia. They got beat down in Kentucky. And they better start paying attention that mm -hmm. this isn't sticking and that people are kind of tired of the shenanigans. So I think that they need to get serious about this. This is a very serious issue. Impeaching a president is serious and it needs to be taken seriously. And you know, Patrick, you know, it, it's important because Sophia raises the point about Amb uh, Ambassador Sondland, right? The million dollar donor to the president who had been sort right. of the only one trying to say no quid pro quo, who, who has, you know, amended his testimony to say that there was. Before, uh, you know, uh, the release of that uh, testimony yesterday from Sondland. Team Trump kept saying there's no quid pro quo because Sondland said so. Then he changed his testimony to say there was a quid pro quo. Here's how Republicans are talking about their former hero. Awesome. Sondland's opening statement, and he says exactly what President Zelensky said, exactly what President Trump said, no quid pro quo whatsoever. You all want to make a big deal out of Mr. Sondland's presumption. He says it was his presumption. All right, so when he first heard the testimony, you just uh, look at it, it was perfect. Then when it got edited, he uh, don't make a big deal out of it, it doesn't matter. I mean, Patrick, that, there, there again, Jim Jordan, um, it, does, does he realize that he is contradicting himself completely? I mean, I can't read his mind, Darren, but uh, anyone who with some experience in politics knows when they're flip-flopping, and they're flip-flopping. I mean, this is mm -hmm. very transparent, what's going on. The reality is, is that uh, the Republicans have very little evidence so far that they've been able to marshal, uh, you know, to sort of to prove and protect President Trump on, on the quid pro quo front. There are now multiple witnesses, both who have said there was a quid pro quo, and you have Sondland, who is, who is now flipped on this point. And the reality is, is that when Republicans, you know, sort of come out and decide to cherry pick uh, arguments because they know that that'll put them uh, in favor, keep them in favor with the White House, that is a, that a, that is a political choice. That's not about yeah. Uh, following, you know, constitutional obligations, constitutional duties. Uh, it, you know, it's ultimately, uh, you know, sort of a momentary way to please a president. But whether that really works in the long term for people like Jim Jordan and others who are who are making these kind of transparent moves, it, you know, they have to hope so. But. Um, you got to ask about sort of what it does to a person's credibility. I mean, Abby, look, you know, today CNN, felt, you know, this is going to end up at the Senate, the removal uh, trial. Um, so CNN tried to talk to Republican senators. It's just a simple question. Is it OK for President Trump to ask Ukraine to investigate political rivals? Uh, Senator Martha McSally literally went around the Capitol, around parked cars, everything to avoid cameras. Uh, her aide said no comment. Uh, Senator Roy Blunt answered it this way. I think that on the Senate side of the building, the best thing for us to do is let all the facts get assembled and then try to decide what they mean. And uh, they got a different job on the House side, but our, our job is to look at a case if it comes over here, when it comes over but here. The president definitely asked for these investigations. Is that OK? And he walks away. Look, they, they don't have a, co a, a consistent message, Republicans, on how to deal with this. That was a very polite non-answer from Senator Blunt, but yep. it, it illustrates how difficult this has been for Republicans. They have tried really uh, studiously to avoid answering that question, which is really at the core uh, of of this issue, uh, but they're going to have a really hard time, especially if they want to proceed with a strategy that involves using Ambassador Volker's testimony uh, as their star witness. Volker makes it very clear he thought it was inappropriate for the president to ask for this investigation, and he thought that uh, that, Bi that the Biden Burisma issue was political in nature. So uh, 
uh, they're going to have a really difficult time because I don't know that anybody that has testified disagrees with the idea that the Biden issue was not only baseless, but also political in nature. And if they're going to try to defend President Trump on the grounds that he has the right to ask for an investigation into corruption, they're going to have to get through uh, that uh, factual problem for them at first. And I think a lot of Republicans are just kind of hoping to buy more time to figure yeah. out what to do about this. I mean, you know, I, I played this earlier in the hour, but in case anyone is joining us, Anne, I need, I need to play for people the single best current defense of Team Trump, which is not that there was no quid pro quo. It's not that the process is rigged. It's not that Volcker's the one to defend. It's that they're, they're just too incompetent to pull it off. I give you Lindsey Graham. What I can tell you about the Trump policy toward the Ukraine, it was incoherent. It depends on who you talk to. They seem to be incapable of forming a quid pro quo. That's your best defense? Yeah. So, I mean, I think what we're seeing is that the president's defenders are in need of a defense. And why they keep jumping from person to person and story to story is that, you know, the simple answer to the question of should